Сите очи на светот се вперени во Соединетите Америки американски држави. Неполна недела до можеби најважните американски избори до сега. Во овој дел од светот пак, грузијците се борат за својата европска иднина по последните избори на кои иднината им беше одземена. Остана помалку од една недела до американските избори за нов председател, кој може би се и најважните избори до сега, ако земеме предвид кој, се, кој учествува во ова председателска а, трка. Од она што можеме да го видиме од анкетите кои доаѓаат од Соединетите Американски а, држави, можеме да заклучиме дека и не е голема разликата помеѓу Камала Харис и Доналд а, Трамп, но, како што кажав, останува да видиме за уште помалку од а, една недела. Овие избори а, се важни поради а, п, различните ставови на председателството телските кандидати а, за глобалните прашања, конкретно а, за војните, така што може да се забележи еден а, страв кај европските партнери, па и кај сите партнери генерално за тоа каков курс ке заземат со Единитите Американски држави по овие председателски избори. На а, сад, а, сад а, скоро им се случи, а, им се случи а, и ураган, и една елементарна а, непогода, Во, во Флорида и токму од таму мојата колешка ја, а, Джалис Дугрот ни испрати еден краток извештај а, за лавиринт, за малку за а, автарматот, односно последиците а, од, а, од овој ураган, но и направи една кратка анкета претежно со млади а, луѓе за тоа што мислат а, тие за председателските кандидати, за кого ке гласаат и секако зошто. We're in Tampa just over two weeks after Hurricane Milton slammed into Florida's west coast as a Category 3, making landfall near Siesta Key and leaving more than 3 million homes without power. Here in Tampa, the effects were felt citywide from flooding to widespread power outages, and residents are still working to recover. With Tampa working to recover from Hurricane Milton, Floridians are also gearing up for election season. With early voting underway and over 3 million ballots having already been casted, we're hearing from Tampa residents on the issues that matter most to them and who they plan to vote for. Who are you voting for this election? So I'm going to be voting for Kamala Harris. Okay. And why Kam Kamala Harris? So I'm going to vote for Kamala Harris because of her tax policy. I think it's very progressive that she's going to focus on the lower and middle class economies. And she's also a better candidate than Trump in my eyes. So right now, I'm definitely leaning towards voting for Kamala Harris. I agree with a lot of her viewpoints, and I appreciate that she has acknowledged the problems that have happened during the Biden administration, and she wants to fix them. That being said, um, the fact that she says she wants to fix them and those things haven't been fixed while she's been vice president makes me kind of wonder, like, hey, are you actually going to fix this? Did you have the power to fix it beforehand and you only want to fix it now just for, you know, uh, for circumstance? Uh, and I did vote for Biden back in 2020. And I will say he unfortunately, in my personal opinion, he let me down. Like my financial situation definitely started declining when he stepped into office. A lot of things got more expensive and it was harder for me to like build up my savings and grow financially as a person. And, you know, it's like I'm making the same amount of money, but I feel like I got to work twice as hard to to be as financially stable as I used to be, um, which is really unfortunate. Uh, but again, like I said, Kamala seems to like actually want to take all the problems that have been happening in the past few years and wants to fix them. 
and I appreciate that she's acknowledged like the mistakes that have happened either on her part or Biden's part, whatever the case is. The fact that she's acknowledged them is like much appreciated. I, I appreciate like an honest person. So yeah, that's why I'm definitely leaning towards the, the Kamala side of things. Uh, so for 2024, I did vote for Donald Trump. Um, I think I'd generally lean more conservative minded and just with family values and that kind of stuff. Uh, I think you talk about concerns, right? Uh, yeah, what, what would your concerns be this election? I think I would say just with like the last track record, there's a lot of stuff with like, uh, I guess, like the whole thing of false news and uh, social media trends with like how they portrayed it in the media with the voting concerns. I'm just I'm kind of worried that might start over again. Like, I don't I understand the whole um, the whole delivery with, oh, there might be fake news and messing with the election. I just hope it doesn't kind of happen again or if there is anything with that. Um, also just kind of worried about the different policies that the different presidencies, uh, the different future presidents might have. Hopefully it just, hopefully it's just, uh, I want the best for everybody. And what future policy, can you give us one policy for an, for an example, as opposed to another political candidate? Uh, to be completely honest, I'm probably not too sure. Sh- I, I just, I think, I think I know a lot more about Trump than I do Kamala sure. or the independents. Honestly, it wasn't really anything specific. Mm-hmm. I just knew that with what Trump stood for and like his, uh, well, I guess, religious views and also just, I guess, maybe in some sense, the honesty in the news. Like he wasn't trying to be a politician, but coming from like working in businesses and making successful businesses. That's what I cared more about with Kamala. I just didn't really see that much about it with I, mean, I know she was like a lawyer, uh, prosecutioner, but yeah. I just I didn't. Yeah, I just okay. didn't see a lot with her compared to with Trump for me. Okay. So I'm actually voting for Jill Stein as an independent. I think that it's really important now than ever since the country is so divided to be voting for third parties and give them more of a voice, more of a platform. With Jill Stein specifically, I know that she has a lot of knowledge about climate change, about the environment, especially with the recent hurricanes in Florida that impacted me and and many others. And just with the heating temperatures, I feel like she's in the position to actually do something about it. And I feel like as like as a community as a nation we need to be putting more efforts into like helping the environment providing things for climate change because i feel like we're behind compared to other other countries around the world so for this election round i decided to vote for kamala harris and tim walls um i decided to vote for them because of the policies that they offer um what i'm most concerned about is for my future and my kids future and just like also my friends future um we're Gen Z. There's a lot of things that we were concerned about and that we went through through high school, through middle school, through elementary school that I think are just more important and more valued um, with Kamala's policies rather than um, Donald Trump policies. Um, I also see the concern for the rest of the country as well. And I want to make sure that in the future, when I am older and I do have kids and a family, I want to make sure I tell my kids about the decisions that I decided to make that hopefully affected their lives in a positive way. Thank you so much. With recovery efforts underway and the election on the horizon, Tampa residents are demonstrating their resilience and commitment to the future. The community's focus is on rebuilding and making their voices heard as they head to the polls. Reporting from Tampa, I'm Jaleesa Dugrow, Labyrinth News. Na evropskom tlo Gruzija ima seriozni problemi vnatre vo državata. Na poslednjite parlamentarni izbori povtorno pobedi partijata Gruzijski son so za Gruzijcite razočarovački rezultati nad 50%. Nikoj do sega ne ji prizna izborite ni tu Gruzijskijot narod, ni tu opozicijata, ni tu međunarodnijot faktor, a Gruzijskata predsedatelka s im se obrati na svojite ludje so, so zborovite, ne gi izgubivte izborite, tuku vi beja ukradeni. Desetici i ljadnici ludje vo Gruzija od, od soopštovanjato na izborite do deneska sekoj dnevno protestirat na ulicite vo baranjata za svojata vetena Evropska idnina. Odime vo tabelisi.
Ekaterina, thank you very much uh, for accepting this interview again. I called you again to make a follow-up of the situation uh, in Georgia. There, uh, there were there was election process, and the ruling party won the elections uh, again. But uh, uh, Georgian people think that they are in a way authoritarian, and they move Georgian people uh, away from from its uh, European path. So uh, the people, the opposition, and the president of the country they don't recognize this election so can you please explain us what was happening at the election uh, day and uh, what followed after you heard the the preliminary uh, results uh, the election day was uh, quite chaotic and even though uh, there were different there were conflicting reports from the side of the uh, pro-government forces or the government itself and uh, the ob independent observers and also including uh, international observers. There were cases of uh, violation, like harsh violation of the electoral process when a GD party representative, uh, allegedly GD party representative in uh, a minority populated uh, in a predominantly minority popula populated city just cast um, tens of ballots in front of everybody else uh, uh, threw these um, ballots inside the uh, inside the box and uh, eventually this um, you know, this pressing election pressing was closed but uh, uh, this was just the most explicit example uh, probably of this uh, um, intrusion into the process. Uh, in on other occasions, also the observers documented um, um, tens of um, hundreds of violations of uh, uh, the election or, um, the, the election process or intrusion into the, the unlawful intrusion or uh, into the um, uh, election process when um, certain people allegedly affiliated with the. Uh, Georgian Dream Party were um, uh, standing outside of the precinct and making the list of, uh, um, I don't know, potentially of those people who probably would, uh, uh, they had an agreement with, who would cast uh, the ballot in favor, who would vote in favor of the GD. Um, these are just uh, uh, a few examples, but there was a uh, obviously, a bigger scheme brewing up uh, for uh, probably months because I, I was uh, just reading uh, um, uh, and uh, finding um, um, uh, finding uh, of uh, the organization think tank Europe Elect, uh, who uh, uh, analyzed uh, the Georgian Central Election Commission's um, results, and he found drastic discrepancy between the uh, voting behaviors in the rural and in the urban areas. So if the urban areas, for example, follow the general trend uh, that, as a, let's say, it was expected probably that uh, GD would um, receive no more than 40%, so 30%. So in the pre-election polls uh, conducted by different organizations and uh, yeah, the, the, the GD only had 30 or a maximum of 35% most of the time. Uh, so, but if the, the, their support was 30 or 35% and the, the, this trend was observed uh, in, in, the, in the cities, for example, so they received no more than 40%, uh, for example, in Tbilisi, in the capital. But in the in the regions, uh, their support in some of the um, uh, in some of the regional uh, election pressings, their support was almost one hundred percent. And uh, there are many stations, uh, there are many uh, election pressings like that. So, which is uh, obviously a big discrepancy from what uh, is to be expected. Uh, uh, during the elections, uh, from the from the voters. So, what for as for what followed? Uh, um, uh, it, there was a huge 
uh, frustration and obviously disappointment um, and shock uh, from all the all the sides, uh, the opposition, the civil sector, and the people in general, because there was this um, enormous unity in terms of what Georgian people stand of there is an enormous unity in terms of what Georgian people stand for and this is uh, um, the the bec uh, this is our aspiration to become part of the uh, European Union at some point and we were given the candidate status uh, status uh, last year but um, uh, as you uh, already know there have been like rather a rather um, unpleasant developments um, again from the side of the Georgian dream and it's drift away uh, from democratic and uh, pro-Western values and uh, becoming highly anti-democratic and um, leaning towards the um, more uh, towards the authoritarian side. Uh, therefore, um, neither people, the, neither majority of the uh, of the Georgian public, uh, nor the opposition party or the president or uh, civil society organizations uh, uh, expect uh, the, the, the recognize the legitimacy of these elections. So we uh, we, we could see a, a massive uh, a massive uh, protest on uh, Georgian. Media people went uh, out, supported the president, who also doesn't support uh, the ruling party. She even tried to block uh, that uh, Russian law, as it's uh, as it's uh, called. So, what uh, what can we expect uh, from the people? Will people uh, uh, continue protesting uh, in this upcoming days? It is my expectation that there will be more protests because people are asking, I can observe on social networks, so, so people are want to express their disgruntlement, their disappointment, their disapproval and their distrust to these elections. Uh, they want to come out and to peacefully um, acknowledge the fact that uh, they are, uh, the, the elections were, were the, the, Greeked uh, and uh, that they do not recognize the uh, legitimacy and the validity of the results of these elections. So the more protests are expected, and uh, um, so far uh, every um, uh, opposition party has uh, mentioned that uh, uh, they will um, again they, they will just withdraw from the. Um, uh, parliamentary, they just withdraw their, they just leave their mandate. So they will, they would not accept their uh, parliament seats in the parliament, uh, leaving uh, Georgian dream alone. And uh, um, then, uh, and then we can see the even the international reactions to the elections. There is an overwhelming concern, like the uh, president of the European. Um, the Commission, uh, so, and then yesterday also the President of the United States also uh, called on for the um, uh, examination uh, uh, or into the or the study into the uh, elections outcomes, um, calling it uh, contentious or disputed elections. Uh, so. There, we we can already probably say that uh, the elections uh, have not been are not considered the outcomes of these elections are not considered uh, legitimate um, in the okay. eyes of the international community, which is a, a very important signal, uh, which should serve as a very important signal to the Georgian dream. And how is the ruling party reacting on all of the, the pressure uh, it gets uh, from the people, from the international community, as you mentioned? Uh, we saw at the election the days that uh, uh, Viktor Orban visited, uh, visited Georgia and immediately uh, the High Commissioner for Foreign Policy of the European Union said that he is not there representing European 
union, just his own uh, country, but he is very close to the leader uh, of the Georgian uh, dream. But all of this together, international uh, reactions, uh, people protesting uh, every day, what is the reaction of the ruling party? Do you see any possibility that they will uh, they will let go and uh, eventually uh, hear what people say and their will? I mean, so far what we have witnessed in the past few months, before, uh, even before the elections, uh, before the elections took place, uh, for throughout these two years, for example, we can see uh, that GD had been uh, almost non-responsive. The only reason that they probably had to uh, just back off slightly, it was last year when they withdrew the first attempt to pass the Russian, uh, from their, the, when they gave up their first attempt to pass the Russian law in 2023, because a big part of their electorate or probably um, uh, that there is uh, more than 80% of uh, support in Georgia to the EU integration. So we can expect that 80% of their uh, electorate also is the pro-European. Uh, so they wanted to they wanted to create this atmosphere that okay, here is the candidate status. Uh, and uh, so, and then it was responding to the pressure also, obviously, uh, from the um, international actors, from uh, um, uh, the Georgian public and their expectations. Um, and uh, if, Geor if uh, the Georgian dream um, chooses to be part of this, uh, um, uh, of this, uh, community, I mean, of the international community, it has to, it has to come to senses. Um, there, there will be no way other than to think and reevaluate uh, the results and probably um, uh, go for uh, another round of the elections, which will be, uh, no, which will be strictly, um, uh, strictly under the uh, Aegis or under the umbrella of the international community. Uh, otherwise, uh, uh, if uh, the people don't recognize you, if uh, the international community, the, the, the European Union, the, the United States and the other, um, uh, other allies or uh, former allies or current allies or the supporters of the Georgian of Georgia and the Georgian people do not recognize these elections. What can GD do? I mean, it has it has to reevaluate what is at stake. Yes, but usually authoritarian leaders don't. I say usually they don't care about what people uh, people think. But when it comes together with the pressure of the international community, maybe there are slight chances for the situation uh, to change. We mentioned that this, uh, the, the problems uh, didn't start at this, uh, at this point with the elections. They started earlier. Uh, Georgian people were out on the street protesting for uh, what is called, an, uh, as we mentioned, this so-called Russian, uh, Russian law. And uh, I, I, I was listening to the president, uh, Zura Bishvili, and she said that this is uh, the acts and uh, uh, aftermath of the Russian hybrid attacks in Georgia. So what was happening except this, uh, this Russian law, law for forbidding people to, to take money from, uh, from the international community? What, uh, what else was happening to... to to come to this uh, a point, uh, can you see uh, more of those hybrid uh, attacks in the, all of this period? Um, yes, uh, this was uh, this is one of the measures that uh, the Georgian Dream and uh, the, the Georgian government uh, the, 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 uh, uh, took uh, embarked on following, but they are not uh, alone in this. Uh, obviously, there are other uh, leaders, uh, also uh, or authoritarian leaning leaders or anti-democratic leaders, who have attempted uh, to 
adopt similar laws or uh, adopted similar laws uh, in other countries as well. And their behavior is quite uh, uh, quite similar and their rhetoric is quite similar. So which uh, uh, is, is which aligns perfectly with uh, what uh, um, we call sovereign, the, the, the so-called Russian a sovereign de or Russian concept of sovereign democracy, uh, when uh, mm, uh, nobody has uh, the right to interfere in the, according to this uh, concept or ideology, no one has the right to interfere in the internal affairs of uh, uh, a single country. Uh, the, 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 in this way, disregarding all the international um, agreements, conventions, um, etc., and the responsibilities uh, towards the human right, um, human rights, and uh, um, uh, the universal uh, rights uh, of the of the people. Uh, and besides uh, the the Russian law, we we've heard recent, quite recently, when. Um, an investigative uh, uh, platform, uh, the Bellingcat, and also Bloomberg had been um, had publicized recently uh, an overwhelming um, uh, interference in the cyber interference in the uh, in the activities of the not the activities, sorry, uh, but in the matters of the. Uh, uh, this large scale hacking into the Georgian institutions uh, during 2016 and 2020. So we uh, can expect that it has uh, uh, the activities, such cyber uh, interference has extended beyond 2020 from the Russian uh, from the Russian side. And obviously, uh, there were uh, also mm, uh, contentions. Uh, winning of the Georgian dream also in 2020. So, um, and there were uh, all, uh, allegations from the side of the <clears throat> of the opposition and uh, um, uh, say also civil society and like the overall expectations of the people also were not met by when the Georgian dream won. Uh, so, in the pop, in general, the popularity of the Georgian Dream has uh, declined significantly. So, the uh, these current elections is also uh, kind of significant in that regard. Uh, so, with this declined uh, popularity um, uh, and the international image and the image uh, locally, uh, party winning fifty three point ninety two percent is already. Um, uh, a suspicious uh, outcome, um, but uh, the pre-election period was also uh, the the closest uh, closest to these elections was also adoption of another uh, what we call a draconian law, uh, which we uh, which was labeled as anti-LGBTQ law uh, when. Um, which Georgian Dream uh, called the law on the protection of minority rights and families, um, uh, in, and which meant uh, uh, something like protection of the uh, minorities and the public from the uh, LGBT propaganda. Uh, so, and this. Uh, Fair mongering that they instilled among the people that uh, uh, the the Western um, be, the Western values were also uh, something were also connected with the um, uh, imposition of LGBTQ um, agenda agenda uh, irrespective of the will of the people uh, and. Uh, this uh, article, this was, this is kind of also a, uh, can be considered also a, like a, a Russian um, perspective on uh, the manipulation of the public uh, feelings and public attitudes and ultimately public behavior. And uh, even though these uh, various issues um, um, uh, that uh, 
were articulated were so absurd that most people would not even consider as uh, um, righteous or um, took, on, took into consideration, uh, there would be still some people who would fall victim to such kind of uh, uh, threats, obviously. Um, and then another thing was, uh, um, I don't know whether this is Russian or with the help of the uh, Russia or uh, just mimicking what uh, uh, Russian government does uh, and using it in their own favor. But uh, there has been uh, allegations also uh, that uh, the illicit use of, uh, regarding the illicit use of the <clears throat> Uh, of the ID cards of, of, of uh, the people and uh, some people um, uh, penetrating elect election pressings using different ID cards or using uh, ID cards of the people who are migrants who no more live in Georgia, who didn't register as voters, uh, who are not uh, um, on the list of the registered voters. Uh, uh, and so they, uh, the government uh, or the Georgian Dream um, allegedly considered them as sort of empty uh, vacant spaces, uh, therefore uh, took uh, uh, the advantage of their absence. Um, and uh, there has they and I've heard that um, there are proofs of that as well. And uh, um, so the pre-election time was uh, full of or infused with. Uh, Could you feel the effect of these laws you mentioned uh, in the pre pre-election period? For example, last time we talked. Uh, there was a fear that uh, many media organization, uh, organizations and uh, NGOs will close uh, after adoption of this kind of law. So did that happen? Do you feel the effects of these actions? Uh, there was an attempt to um, restrict the, um, uh, the work of uh, one of the election observers um, of two actually, one of them is uh, Transparency International Georgia, uh, but eventually they had to um, uh, step back um, because uh, there was uh, no grounds for such restriction. They didn't have any valid grounds for such restrictions. Um, they were uh, blaming, uh, accusing uh, Transparency International Georgia and having a political interest <laughs> Um, so that's one of the also one of the tools, one of the mechanisms to um, cr create um, a false image of uh, um, civil society organizations having uh, something like political interests uh, in in the can in having certain candidates over others or interfering in the political affairs. Uh, so they are presenting it as, um, therefore, as in, invalid, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, but other than that, um, other than that, there have hasn't been um, any uh, instances of, of uh, closure or restriction of the activities. But uh, there has been, uh, from what I've heard, those organizations who chose to register ultimately um, are the personal information of their employees were publicly put out um, for uh, public view. That includes uh, their um, um, very personal details like banking information, uh, salaries that they receive, etc. Um, which uh, again goes against the uh, basic um, uh, the laws that uh, protect uh, our personal information uh, because civil society representatives are not uh, uh, public uh, employees uh, therefore um, uh, they, they do not have uh, the uh, this obligation uh, otherwise to um, uh, 
Twix uh, to publicize uh, uh, their uh, personal, uh, very, very personal information, including them, um, and, uh... including their employment records, etc. Yeah. So this, uh, I mean, we can freely call this protest as a uh, Georgian fight for its European future. And uh, apparently the ruling party is not uh, listening, but uh, because the, 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 the thing is so big, uh, I mean, you have a euro aspirations that are now under threats. And uh, uh, of course, with all of these laws you mentioned, uh, they all are just uh, making life difficult to, to the Georgians. So at this point, what can we expect? Uh, how, how can we expect this fight for European freedom uh, to go on? So are Georgians uh, willing to go out and protest every day until they get what they want? And are there, there other ways uh, Georgians can use in order to, to fight uh, this uh, ruling party? One of the ways is obviously the protest, and every time the protest uh, is announced, the people are ready to go out and protest and uh, put aside, uh, put everything aside, and commit to their European future, obviously, and to the future of their uh, children. Um, uh, and uh, <clears throat> another way is, uh, of course, that has to be done by. Uh, right now, it's um, there is a uh, uh, high hope uh, that uh, uh, the opposition parties will uh, um, uh, manage to um, will manage to somehow play their role in this uh, in this and what they have done so far, as I have mentioned, they have abandoned their mandates. Um, uh, so which will which will be formalized very uh, very soon uh, and the, the the third uh, thing is the third uh, uh, is the pressure the international pressure and non recognition of uh, georgian uh, elections the legitimacy of the georgian elections so uh, non recognition of the legitimacy of georgian do you expect that to happen do you expect the whole international community w w won't uh, accept the, the the election results? I do because uh, before uh, w what happened before was that the uh, pre-accession negotiations for Georgia to the, to the EU pre-accession negotiations were halted because of the adoption of the foreign agent law or the Russian law. So. Which this means that there is a unity among our Western uh, partners, among our Western allies, that um, uh, our Western allies that uh, uh, they support uh, Georgian people, they support uh, Georgian people's uh, 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 European aspirations. One of the ways is not to allow the um, uh, authoritarian leaning government to. Uh, has its way, right? Uh, and it's also the responsibility of the international community uh, to um, point at the uh, mistakes and wrongdoings of uh, their fellow states, uh, especially when the, we have been granted the EU candidate status. And... Uh, um, yeah, I, I think these are the three important um, ways to uh, move forward. Yes, Katarina, there are clearly some authoritarian ways uh, in this uh, past few years uh, uh, blowing in Europe. So what, but what people are left to do is just uh, to fight for their freedom. This kind of loss and this kind of behavior is not something we expected to see in the 21st century. We thought uh, these questions about human rights are, uh, are closed uh, until now, but unfortunately it's uh, not like that. So we will follow up the situation in Georgia and uh, uh, wish you luck 
uh, in, in your fight uh, for European future and for human rights because uh, a lot of these laws, they, uh, they directly uh, 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 enter in, in the field of uh, human rights. Uh, if if uh, we missed something, if, you there, if there is anything uh, else you want to add uh, before I said thank you, please. Um, I think uh, we all, um, especially the countries who are in there, uh, in this, who are still in the stage of uh, um, accession, uh, accession to the European Union, uh, the uh, in the countries uh, <clears throat> fighting for their uh, democracy, we have to stand together um, and. Uh, the solidarity is very important. So you asked uh, this question whether uh, there will be um, an overwhelming support uh, to the non-recognition of the elections. And I think that's also solidarity to the, that would be the expression of solidarity to the Georgian people. Uh, also, when uh, these kind of things happen, um we need to stay united that's right that's actually the only way to to beat authoritarian regimes ekaterina thank you very much uh, for your time as and as i said i wish you luck in this uh, in this very important uh, process for for georgian people thanks again thank you Гледавте уште еден лавиринт, јас сум Кристина Атовска. Ви благодарам за вниманието и се гледаме повторно на следната недела. Лавиринтот по американските избори секако дека ќе вклучиме некој од таму за да видиме што се случуваше на денот на изборите и да го проследиме победникот секако и да подискутираме за тоа како в курс ке заземе може би и најмочната држава жава во светот во овој момент по нивните председателски избори. Уште еднаш ви благодарам за вниманието со кое не следевте. Се гледаме повторно следната недела во Лавиринт. Довидување.